Finally, we are focusing now on the most interesting part of this lesson because we're going to create the animation. So there is this function animate right here, so inside of which we define a keyframe animation, so which is an instance of a class CA keyframe animation. And we want to create an animation on the bounds. We want to animate the change in the bounds valve. So we assign self to the delegate of the keyframe animation, and it works very much like the animate with duration that we used in the first module. So we're going to define the duration and also a begin time, which corresponds to when we want the animations to start. And we're going to implement a slight delay by adding this plus one. So meaning that this is going to start so one second after we load the, the view. And below we have this command. So this is where we're going to define the start of the animation. So how we want the animation to start. And we're going to then create also how we want it to end, meaning that we want it to bounce, like create a bounce effect. We want it to zoom before it finishes on the on re, by revealing the timeline, the Twitter timeline. So we're going to start by the animation right here. So here we're going to define so the initial bounce. Basically, we're going to use this class, which is NS value. Going to open parentheses and we're going to use CG rect to define the bounds, so the initial bounds that we want for this, oh, sorry, so for the syntax is going to be CG rect like so. And this is where we're going to define so the value of the bounds that we want for the initial, the initial, the starting point of the animation. So for the starting point, what we want is to have the initial bounds of the mask logo as we have defined right here, which is 100 by 100. So that's going to be mask and bounce. So what we want is for the animation to start with the value of 100 by 100. Simple as that. Next, we're going to go there, bounce zooming effect. So this is where we're going to initialize the different sequence of the animation. So I'm going to name this one middle bounce. And here as well, we're going to use NS value. And we're going to use as well CG rect. It's going to take a parameter, which is going to be CG rect. And here inside for as a value of this parameter CG rect, we're going to call again CG rect, the CG rect function, which is going to take an X and Y coordinate and width and height. So I made a typo in the syntax, so it's not going to help for the autocomplete. Like so, it's better. So it's better with the autocomplete. So we're going to write zero for the X and Y. And finally, for the width and height, we're going to actually decrease the value, the initial value by 10 for each for the width and the height. And that's going to create this effect of the logo decreasing slightly by 10 points for the width and height and then expanding again. So that's going to create this bouncing effect. So we have actually two parentheses just so we get rid of the error. So we're going to continue by defining then the final bounds that we want for this animation. So that's going to be just like the top. We're going to actually copy and paste to save some time. So we're going to use the NS value. We're going to keep a zero and a zero for the X and Y again. And this time what we want is to create a big frame for the logo. So big that we won't be able to actually see it on the screen. So it's going to be decreasing slightly by 10 and then completely expanding to reveal the timeline. So that's for the bounds. What we want next is to assign so the, the values that we have just defined to the values and key times probably of the keyframe animation. So the keyframe animation will be a sequence of animation which is going to be rendered one after another. So we're going to define the value, so that's one property, to which we're going to assign the different bounds that we have specified. So that's going to be first initial bounds followed by middle bound, so that's going to be the second animation, and then final bounds for the last part. Finally, we want to also create the timelines with the key time, so that's going to be the relative durations for each of the animation, for each step that is going to go through, so we're going to have zero. So we want this one to start immediately at zero, zero, and then we're going to have 0 0.3, the second animation, which is going to be the middle bounds, will start 
at 30 milliseconds after the first one is finished. And then the last one is going to be at 1. And then we're going to also add some timing functions to the animation. So that's going to allow to add some flexibility to the animation instead of having the same speed of the animations from start to finish. We can use timing function. And that is very similar to the options that we use with animate with durations like curve linear, so which is when you apply the same speed, but you have also curve is out or curve is in. So we're going to do keyframe animation and we're going to add this property, which is timing function. And that's going to be, so that's going to be a lot of writing here. So it's good if you can autocomplete and that's going to be key CA. It's going to come up. KCA media timing function is in, is out. So that's going to be for the first one. But then we're going to add another one separated by comma. I'm going to actually copy and paste. It's going to be easier. I'm going to copy this one and then paste right here. And for the second one, it's going to be just is out, like so. And I think I have an extra parenthesis in that instance. Okay, that's it. Okay. So the last thing we want to do is now adding the animations to the mask. So we have our layer self mask. And then we're going to do add animation. And we're going to add, so for the first parameter, the keyframe animation that we have just created. And for the key, that's going to be the bounds because we want to animate, we want to animate the change in the bounds. So that's going to be three different steps. So this first step, which is going to be the initial bounds that right in the middle, we're going to have this. And then the second final bounds, it's going to be this one. So now that we have completed this animate function, we need to now apply it. And we're going to call this one in the view did load. So the animation is going to start as soon as the view loads. And we're going to run now the application. We're going to open the simulator. And you're going to see that now we have the logo, which is going to expand. Although the animation starts and then completes, it's going to go back to the Twitter logo. It's not really what we want as the final result. That function, so below, which is animation desktop. And we're going to need to complete this one to complete this video lesson. And we're going to see that next.